Hello once again and uh, welcome back. This is the episode on the clock. Um, the clock being the foundation for all the timed events uh, within the, the mission script. I steered away from using timers, uh, the, the conventional sort of timer that is used in uh, the mission scripting. Um, it's it, it truncates the values that you put into it. So if you want to set a value for a timer that is a second or more, you're fine. Uh, because that is an integer, one, two, three, and all that. But you can't set like 1.5 seconds. Uh, you can't set half a second uh, because it'll just truncate to one. Um, and you can't set 0 0.25 seconds if it'll just again truncate to one. So for for smaller time things, uh, it's it's a bit of an issue. And this became a problem when I was building systems which were sort of. Uh, trying to set attributes of a ship for instance and if the attributes didn't match with the kind the class of ship that it was then it would just sort of hang for a second before it recycled I needed a quicker cycle um, and so I designed this clock uh, the clock takes uh, sorry makes use of the Delta movement um, that you can do to generic objects since Delta time is, is a very accurate or a pretty accurate way of um, measuring time uh, or getting a, an accurate time within within a game space regardless of the frame rate I thought it'd be best to, to use that so I will show you how it works here we go jump on oh, I could do a start and survey all right and straight away you can see we have this diagnostic window this is a f7 by the way on the server screen if you just press f7 it cycles through a bunch of things the variables what we're looking at just now and then we'll join in and you can see that the server screen is uh, quite choppy, by the way. If I move the ship, it's choppy as hell. If you are looking for a main screen, like if you run a server that is also your main screen, my advice to you would be to run this and then run another client on the same server and connect it as your main screen because the main screen on a client is absolutely fine. There's very little going on on the client. Um, and that's what I do. Anyway, that aside, that being said, rather, let's go back to what I was talking about, the clock. So, here we go. Um, so we have something called the sixth tick state. Now that is, uh, I'll show you here. Um, we have a, a generic mesh which is generated at zero, zero, zero. Uh, this, is, this happens if the clock doesn't exist, essentially. And as soon as that happens, then the clock exists and it never gets created again. So at the beginning of the, at the, beginning of the simulation, an object is created up in the top right hand corner and it is called clock. There it is. And you can see it sort of moving back and forth. It's not a very accurate representation of how it's being reset, but it's there. You can see it. Uh, and if you wanted to name it something else so there wasn't a big thing saying clock there, I totally understand. Uh, I just kind of left it as clock for this time. Um, so we have a clock object and you can see here that it is <coughs> its property of delta x. That is how much it moves <coughs> in the x direction over time um, is set to 400. The reason I set it to 400 and still called it sixths, I have no idea. I think that was an oversight on my part. But okay, it's called it's, it's being set to 400, and every 100, so it's, this should be quarters, should be fourths. Um, every 100, it sets it back to uh, zero, as you can see here. So. It's so waiting for the clock to exist. Clock timer state is not zero. It's not like ticked. Because zero, if, if we look back at the uh, thing here, you'll notice that everything apart from the clock timer state, when it ticks, so the sixth tick state ticks at one, half tick state ticks at one, or ticks to one, and then the clock timer state ticks to zero. That's because when I made the, the initial function for the clock timer, um, I did it backwards and left it that way. Um, and every every other implementation of the clock timer state has been reversed. So I, I don't want to have to go through and edit this much at this time. And it, it works fine just now. So if uh, if we're reading this, um, yeah, if the clock timer state is not ticking, then uh, the position x of the clock, if it's greater than 100, i.e. more than a quarter of its way, uh, then we set the sixth tick state to one telling us that we have ticked one of the you know it is ticked for a sixth um, or a quarter in this instance uh, and then we set the clock position back to zero so that it starts all over again and then we add one to the world sixths which go up every single time the sixth tick, 
uh, the sixth tick state ticks. So we have 646 at this point, yeah? And they're obviously not six, neither are quarters, so quarters, two quarters would make the half, which is exactly what's happening. Half seconds are listened to in a slightly different way. They don't listen directly to the object, they listen uh, for the, um, they, they listen for the tick state. So, half seconds. If world sixths, oh yeah, there's, there's another variable called world sixth then. Um, past tense, obviously. So we have, if, if world sixth, which go up with every single tick of the, uh, of the sixth tick state, Sorry about all the X sounds. Um, if, if the world six equals world six then, which is set within here, plus two, meaning that um, when we when we last stored the world six then value, so say we're, we're ticking away and uh, we have two world six, world six then would be zero. World six has been going up with this, so we if it's at two, so that would be zero plus two is two then we would tick the half, sec uh, the half tick state and uh, the world six then would then be set to the world six now. So we'd then have two and then it would go through a cycle one more time and then world six would be three which is less than two plus two and it would go through again and we'd have world six which is four which is equal to, equal to two plus two so at that point it would tick one more time then the world six then would be set to four because world six is four. I realize that might be uh, an awful lot to follow very quickly, but it is the way it is. It's just, you know, ticking through these things to make sure that uh, these increment fairly regularly. And uh, the same is true of the world seconds, except the world second listener is listening for half second ticks. So every two half seconds, a second is counted. And so with this functionality, we have the ability to um, micromanage uh, the, the code a little bit better. We can ask things to, to cycle at a quicker rate than per second. And it's fairly regular as well, unlike the timers. <clears throat> uh, so, that's pretty much the clock. Uh, it is used in uh, the ship generator, the transitions, when you're listening for transitions and stuff in, in the game. Uh, it's it's like checking every, I think, half second for the transition. Um, and it's also used to make sure that if, if ever the code gets at a dead end, if, if the code for generating a ship, for instance, gets to a dead end because of some restrictions on, on the ship type, uh, it can reset the ship type and then try again more quickly than a second, like every second. Um, and I, I think the next video will do on transitions more than likely. So um, we'll see you then. Bye-bye.